Okay, let us now dive into our good friend, Mayor. Welcome everyone to EDAP 690, the class that Mayor built. Well, we've gotten Mayor out of the way. We're now ready to move on to the rest of the class where we are going to be looking at different tools that can do multimedia learning. We are going to always keep Mayor, though, in our minds as we go through these various tools. Now, some tools work very well with Mayor. In other words, you can look at it and you can say, oh, yeah, that's what he meant. Others, not so much. And this is one of those, not so much. We're going to be looking at Animoto. Excuse me for all the jittering around. We're going to be looking at Animoto. Animoto is a really cool product. I've used it for years. I will give you the Animoto username and password that you can use to log in so you have full access to the full account. Please feel free to use it with your students. There are literally thousands of Animotos in that account that represent student use. Um, the Animoto people, I have an account with them where I get to do that. So uh, you won't have any trouble with Mary and Jerry signing in at the same time. It'll allow it to happen. The only thing about it you have to be aware of is, and I, this is my fault, I should go in and clean out the Animotos that are in there because it will take a second or two to load uh, when you want to go in and actually look at them. But having said that, it has no effect on the actual uh, Animoto app itself. So what we're going to be doing here is I want you to create the story of your journey into teaching. As you'll see when we get into the Animoto, the length of your story can be, can be dependent upon the length of the video, of the music that you put into your video. Animoto is not a service, an app that's driven by recording visuals of you sitting and talking. It is all done through the use of visuals, pictures, words, and music. Now, what would Mayer have to say about that? Well, the argument we can make, and I will make, is that music tells a story just as much as words do. But you still have to be careful. And I'll show you examples here in just a second that I think speak very eloquently to Mayor. So let me go ahead and jump into the module here. As you can see, there's, there's not a whole lot here because it's that simple. And I'm going to click here, and this will take me to the Animoto. Now, this is the part where you probably should write this down. You're going to log in as me. And that would be with my email of sbswan02 at louisville.edu. And the password is all caps, ULIT4198. No spaces. All caps, ULIT4198. The 4198 represents the semester that we're in. And so what I do is every semester I change that password. So if you want to use this, say, in the spring with your kids or at some other time other than this semester, give me a holler. I'll gladly give you the new password. I also tell people that if they want to use the Animoto for their personal use, I've had people create Animotos to announce weddings, to announce birthdays, to announce parties. You'll see in a minute how you can do all that. So I'm going to log in. And it just popped up and said that's not the right password. So we'll put in the right password. And it was the ULIT4198. So obviously you can see I haven't been in here since I have changed the password, so I'm going to update it on my Chrome. Isn't this interesting? Look at all the different things that people have created. Kind of cool. 
So let me give you a sense of what it can look like. So let me show you, um, and this is what I mean. You see how it's taking a little bit of time to find things because there's so many of them. Um, one of the things that I did with a group of kids at a school is we did the uh, shoes for water. And um, so we created this Animoto you're going to see here in just a minute, I hope that um, we'll show you what it can look like. And if that one doesn't load, we'll jump to another one. As I said, I have so many of them. Okay. Let me show you then an example of what the assignment is asking you to do. In other words, what someone created who actually uh, was in this class. And it would, I would pick the day where the internet is running slow here at the university. Okay, so let's see, Tim, Tim, Tim. Let's see if we can get Tim's to come up. There it is. Okay, so here's, this is Tim's. Um, and you're going to have to, let's see, I'm going to go close the door. I'm sitting in 201G uh, in the ERTC here in the college bed, and the door is wide open, and when I play this, you're going to hear music and people get a little upset. Well, anyway, let's look at it first, and then we'll talk about it. So as you can see, what Tim did with his is he basically took you on a journey, his journey, of becoming a teacher through the use of very compelling pictures, uh, a minimum of text, and then, of course, that really strong, strong music playing in the background. Now, let's take a time out for a second here so I can explain how he gets away with using A, that copyrighted music you heard at the beginning. I think it's a Conway West song. And then B, the probably copyrighted pictures that are in here. How do we get away with doing that? Well, we get away with doing it through a policy um, called fair use. And fair use is, it is not law. Uh, it is a defense that states very simply that under certain specific unique circumstances, you may use copyrighted material that has limits on how you may use the copyrighted material, the length of the copyrighted material. And so as you, as you look Sorry. at, look at these pictures, you. you'll see that every one of these pictures he got off of doing a Google image search. Simple as that. So how does he use these? Because he's using these in an educational format, he may use copyrighted pictures. How does he get away with using the piece of music that he is using? He may use, you may use, copyrighted music either 30 seconds worth or 10% of the total time of the music. So if the music is 
two minutes long, that's 120 minutes, 10% of that, you get the idea. So that's how we do it. And then, of course, the words are his. Now, let me show you how you make an Animoto, because it's about as simple as you get. So when you land here, you're going to click on the Create button. And the first thing you have to do is you have to decide that you're making an Animoto memory. Now, if you want to do an Animoto marketing for something at your school, feel free. But we're just going to do a memory. So the first thing we have to decide is what do we want our background to be? Now, when we looked at Tim's, you definitely saw there was a definite background there. Now, let's, let's bring Mr. Dr. Mayer into this. Remember what he said about redundancy. Be careful about things that can be distracting. So when you look at your backgrounds, would we want to use something that is highly mobile? Because they're in here. They have lots of pretty animation ones. Or would you want something that is basically very flat that allows you just to um, focus in on the pictures? Now, if you go up here, you'll see you have categories. So you could go to school. Now, right away, when I look at some of these, watch this one. When you look at the Earth one, uh, the little butterfly down here actually flies. The fusion one, a future one, excuse me, which is the one I think that Tim used, again, it has things in the background that are happening. Even the back to school one has things in the background that shift and change. So you have to think about, and the winding vine does the same thing. You have to think about what is it I'm trying to do here. And if it's that I'm just trying to come up with something that I want you to be focused on the pictures and not be distracted, then you're going to look for something that has either like an air or maybe just a flat background. Um, something that will not <clears throat> distract. So I'm going to go with simplicity. Now, when I do that, what happens is it starts showing me the different pieces. it starts showing me different pieces that are a part of this particular theme. You do not have to use the pieces. In other words, the first piece you heard when I played the, the video that shows what it's going to look like, you hear the music. You don't have to use their music, okay? You're going to be able to change everything you want. So I'm going to go ahead and say, this is the theme that I want. I want to keep it simple. Now, having said that, let me assure you that any time in this process, if you want to change that theme, you can, and you don't lose anything. In fact, it's really hard to lose an Animoto. The only way you can lose an Animoto, I'll show you, is if you don't do the following. So right up here in the corner, there's a little gear. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on that. Whoops, that's not for what that is. I'm sorry. Settings, excuse me. You're going to come up here on the left hand, right hand side, click on settings. And the first thing you want to do is you want to name your project. If you do that, then what it does is it hangs on to your project for you won't lose it. In fact, I've been in schools where the kid walk up and unplug somebody's computer while they're working on the Animoto and it doesn't get lost. But if you don't do this first, then you could run into trouble later on. Although I'll show you, it comes back and says, hey, did you really want to, you know, what do you want to name this thing? You can also, once you get done, you can come back in here and you can change the thumbnail. Note you want to be on the front. So I'm going to save that, and now I'm ready. So all I do at this point is I go out and I start looking for pictures. Now, at this time, this is kind of the bass backwards. You know, I should have probably started with looking for the pictures first of all. But that's okay, because now I know what I'm doing. So I would go out here, and I would start looking for pictures that would tell my story. As simple as that. If I have a picture that is on my 
phone. All I got to do is plug my phone into the computer, find my phone, upload the pictures. You get the idea? So, like, if I want to use this particular photo, I'll just do a right-click on it and save image as. I'll make sure that I the new name so that when I go back and I start looking for these, I'll know where they go. Okay. And that's all we're doing. We are basically putting together a collection of pictures. How many pictures do I need, Steve? As I told you, your music will make it last the length that it needs to last. So I'm just randomly, I'm not really doing a good job here. I'm really not digging very far down into it, but I'm just randomly going through and finding pictures that would definitely demonstrate uh, my journey into teaching, why I went into teaching. Okay. And, you know, just keep doing the Google searches. That's all I'm doing at this point. All right. So I get about, you, you need at least 10 to give you an idea. So you need at least 10. Otherwise, it doesn't know what to do. Um, and let's go back in and look. So now I'm going to add those pics and videos. I'm going to tell that I want a picture. I'm going to upload my pictures. I'm going to go to where my downloads were. That's where I put them all. You know these tricks. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select everything. And now I put them in. So what he's doing now is he's going to upload my pictures. I'm going to do it multiple times so that I can get them all in here. I th let's see, that wasn't six. We'll do a few more. All right. Now, when it does that, they all show up right here. And already you can see I'm having a little bit of problem. Uh, as this is not Animoto. This is the University of Louisville's network. I'm not going to fight with it. It's the university's network. It's running so slow right now. So you put your pictures in. The next step after that is you can add text. Now let's do that. So let's go in here. So I can either put in a slide that just has words on it like that, or if I can get a picture, let's, let's see if I can load up one of their pictures just for, so I can have something to put in here. I'll do a nature scene. Can I have a nature scene, please? Okay. Um, let's use that one. Okay, and now I've got it. So I can either go in here and I can put a text in front of it and then put the picture that explains it better. If you think about mayor, this would be what? This is temporal contiguity. So the fact that my words are then followed by a picture immediately work. Now, if I'm concerned about spatial contiguity, I would click on the little icon at the bottom of the picture. And I'm just typing in here. Uh, you know, I could probably do a much better job of finding all this stuff. But since the network is being goofy, I'm not going to fight with it. I'm just going to get it done. 
Goodness gracious, learn how to spell Da Vinci, Stephen. Okay, so I'm going to bring that in. So as you can see, I've got an example of spatial contiguity, and I've got an example of temporal contiguity. So that's how you do it. And so you just add pictures, pictures, pictures across the board. Um, let me go ahead and add some more pictures. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to let me play. And I'll go ahead and, and do the nature one. And again, what I'll do here is I'll just do that. I want this one. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. Okay, so I've got them all selected now. Okay. So I'm building my, my little video here. And then I'm going to put in more text boxes. By the way, you can just drag things around, you know, if you want to change up the order in which they occur. Okay. So I'm just basically, that's all there is to it. Um, pictures can stand on their own. Remember, that's, the mayor says that. Um, but now we come to the part that makes this unique. And that is we're going to find a piece of music. So as you can see, it says right here to change the song. And what I do is I go in here and I browse the full library. Now, this is real music. Um, and it's music that is done through the different genres. And so when you think about what you're doing here, this is where it slows you down. This is where you want to take your time and find yourself a piece of music that really, really works. And you just do that by clicking on the different pieces of music. And then it'll play it for you. There's some really beautiful stuff in here. And as I said, it's some of the best uh, free music you're going to find. Now, what's funny is there's some in here that are just hilarious. I can't see. I'm trying to find the one you always play that puts an earwig in your head. Um, I don't, let's see. Let's see what Boogie Woogie Buggy is. There you go. And that's the whole point. The whole point is to find that perfect piece of music. Now, if you want, you can come over here and you can sort of uh, focus it down by clicking on a target. And that helps, you know. I, 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 some of the choices they put in these collections, I don't understand. Okay. Oh, no, I'm not going to go there. Okay. Um, let's see what Love Your Life is. Done. So there's my music. So I'm going to put the new music in. So now let's review. I've got text. I've got pictures. I've got pictures with text on them. And now I have music. Here's the key. If I come up here and click on the gear now, I can determine two things. At this point, I can determine how long my song runs. I also can determine where the song starts. So if the beginning of the song, I don't need to hear that. I can slide this over to where I want it to start. And that's where I can have my show start. Now below this, where the image pacing is, you can see that for right now, we're sitting on 
auto. When you turn auto on, it now will make the pictures go as long as your song is. Simple as that. So I'll save that. Now I'm ready to preview my amazing piece of work. Oh, sorry about that. So you can either, when this happens, you can either go in here and just turn the auto off if you want to. Okay. Now we're ready to preview. So I'll go in here and I'll preview it. I'm going to produce it. Oh, look, it comes back and reminds me one more time. Don't mess up. Put a name to it. Isn't it great? And I'll do 720p just because I think it looks cool. And I'm going to let it go. Now, did you notice I did it too fast? But if you notice down there at the bottom, it does give you an out. In other words, if you messed up, you want to go back and work. On, hey, look here. It even gives you that same out right here. And that's, it's cool. It's just so easy to work with. Then I'm going to play my creation. And, you know, there it goes. That's all there is to it. So you, you could, as you can see, the key to this is very mayor, <laughs> very mayor. The key to this is you making sure that your pictures and your message line up. They actually try to tell you the story that you're trying to get across. It's so mayor, it is so mayor. Um, and when you're done, the beauty is it's so simple to then take it somewhere. Look at all the choices you have. This is what I meant about if you wanted to use this to announce something to, you know, your friends or whatever, feel free to do that. For our purposes, make sure you click the hide Animoto branding. We don't need to see that. Um, as you can see, you have the ability to embed it into your wiki space. Huh. So let's go ahead and that, and I'm going to copy my embed code. I'm going to go to my PDWorks wiki. And I'm going to log in. And in here, let's see, which one was I playing with? I think I was playing with this one. So what we have to do, let's make sure we're doing it right. I mean, I think I know what I'm doing, but I want to make sure. So if we go in here and we look at what Steve is asking us to do, what he's asking you to do is to create a new page in your wiki. And in that new page, all you're going to do is paste in your amazing Animoto that you just created. Let's double check that. Create a new page in your wiki entitled My Journey into Teaching. Embed your Animoto there. Simple as that. In that page, identify each element as it appears in your Animoto. In other words, just basically say, you know, the pictures I put in here and the music I put in here, all of this makes it work with these elements up here. I have a point of view, a dramatic question, emotional content, the gift of music, and economy. That's what it's asking you to do is basically judge yourself on those five different categories. All right, let's jump back into our PBWorks. And he said to make a new page. I can go up here to Pages and Files. I can create a new page. I'm going to call it my journey into teaching. Create the page. I need to open that page now to work on it. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to go over here to insert. 
I'm going to insert a video. No, excuse me. I'm going to insert uh, HTML JavaScript. Whew. Because that's what that was. We just copied. And now I'm going to paste that in here. When I do the next and I do the insert plugin and I do the save, there's my Animoto. That's simple. And when I click on it here, okay. So then what I do is I'm going to take the URL of the page that my Animoto lives on, and I'm going to come back into my class. I'm going to go to the assignments. And for this particular assignment, all I'm going to do is just paste in that link. Simple as that. Because the writing that you did is on the page that's inside your PB Works. Don't forget to do that. So in other words, you're going to come back in here and you're going to use those five um, different elements. What is my point of view? What is my dramatic question? You know, the point of view, of course, is that I went into teaching. I always wanted to be a teacher. The dramatic question, a key question that, you know, is when I look at your video, why do I want to stick around and watch it? Last thing to show you. Well, let me keep going. Emotional content, uh, what's going on here? It's keeping me focused on what you're doing. And then, of course, the gift of music. Why'd you pick the piece of music you got? Um, and just enough content to tell the story. It's almost, you know, it kind of explains it all. Last thing to show you, because uh, I kind of skipped over it. So let me jump back in here to edit the video. When Tim created his video, he used a copyrighted piece of music but he followed the rules of fair use. So therefore he was able to use that copyrighted piece of music. He only used 30 seconds of it. Now, if I want to do that, I would go into the song and right here. So at this point I would have my phone plugged in. I would upload the song that I want to use, but a bit of, um, and, but I realize that I can only use 30 seconds or 10% of the actual content of the song. And we know now to do that, all I have to do is go up here to my gear. And if I'm going to use just the piece of music, in other words, there's not going to be any other music. I'm going to have to do a serious trim to get it down to what I want, which is going to impinge upon how this how the thing plays is going to zip right through it now here's another way you can do that and that's what Tim did if you'll notice that right below here get rid of it so you can see it he added another song so what he did is he put in enough signs up here that went with that first piece of music that he had so that when he added another song and I'm going to, let's see, what is it? Oh, it's Love Your Life. So let me go change it real fast. Um, <laughs> I hate this because I get into this thing and I just want to sit and listen to it, you know. Okay, we'll use it after go. Okay, so I'm going to select that song. Now, now that I've selected that song, first of all, I'm going to get rid of this one. What I have to do now is I've got to add some more pictures in here to go with this other piece of music that I have. Let's see if I can get my pictures to upload. Still not working. Not a problem. I just go right back here and use the ones they give me. So you can see that I have to have quite a lot of pictures to, to do this. Okay. So I would add a whole new thing of music, and then I could have both pieces running together at the same time. That's all there is to it. So that is module number three.
when I see you again next Wednesday, we will be looking at some serious digital storytelling. And we'll be using a tool called Beyond. I don't know if you've had Beyond with me before. Beyond, unfortunately, uh, has become a more difficult tool to um, use because I can't get a uh, uh, login that I can share with you. We have to make our own logins. And that's okay. I mean, that's fine. Uh, the other part of it is it only allows you to keep the login for 14 days. So we're going to have to be careful about that when we get our beyond done, we get it put into the assignment so I can grade it uh, so that, you know, when the 14 days are up, it doesn't go away. As always, if you have any questions, concerns about what we're doing with this class, you may reach me with a text at 502-457-2937.